A 48-year-old man presents with a two-year history of low back pain that improves with exercise, but not rest. He also has heel pain. Analyze the film, and you can see syndesma fights there and there. Also, something called the shiny corner sign, or Romanus lesion. Here's another one. There's another one. Squaring of the vertebral bodies. And also, there is fusion of both sacroiliac joints. What is the most likely diagnosis? Ankylosing spondylitis. And the best next step in management is referral to a rheumatologist. A 55-year-old man presents with back pain. He also has dark pigmentation in areas of the sclera, ears, and palms. Analyze the film and you can see multi-level calcification of the intervertebral discs in a layered pattern. This finding of disc calcification has a long differential However, this is a relatively unique pattern of calcification, and also in combination with the history, the most likely diagnosis is ochronosis. The best next step is to find homogentistic acid in the urine. A 42-year-old man presents with back pain. He has a recent history of dental abscess. On the film, we see a reduction in disc space at this level and osteolysis of the end plates also. These findings in combination with the history of the dental abscess points to the most likely diagnosis of discitis with vertebral osteomyelitis. The best next step is to refer the patient to the emergency department. Here's an 18-year-old man with headaches and tingling in his upper extremities. On the film, we see large block vertebra, or failure of segmentation, at multiple levels. You also see the classic wasp waist appearance, and what appears to be rudimentary discs. The most likely diagnosis is clipophile syndrome. And the best next step is uh, MRI of the cervical spine. Here's a 17-year-old swimmer. He has acute onset of low back pain, and on physical exam, the standing stork test is positive. On the oblique film, analyze the so-called Scotty dog, and you will see a lucent defect of the pars. This indicates spondylolysis and the best next step is to determine if the lesion is recent, active, and stable. You do that with MRI or SPECT bone scan. MRI would save the patient from radiation. Here's a 14 year old girl with back pain. Note the Increased thoracic kyphosis. Also, anterior wedging of the vertebral bodies and irregularities of the end plates at multiple levels. This indicates Sherman's disease. The best next step depends on where you get your information, but people recommend postural exercises and consider bracing depending on the angle of the curve. Here's a 34-year-old woman presenting with back pain, radiating to the right anterior thigh. On physical exam, there are cafe au lait macules, and the femoral nerve stretch test is positive on the right. Note the acute scoliotic curve, posterior vertebral body scalping at multiple levels, and an increase in the dimensions of the intervertebral foramen here and 
also here, and the erosion of the pedicles. This combination of findings, in addition with the history, suggests neurofibromatosis. The best next steps involves further evaluation with MRI and referral to a neurologist. Here is a 50-year-old woman with thoracolumbar pain that is not responsive to conservative care. Count the anatomical structures carefully. You will note pedicle, 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 and a missing pedicle here. This is also called a winking owl sign. Most likely diagnosis is osteolytic metastasis. The best next step is MRI labs referral to an oncologist treating it as cancer until proven otherwise. Here's a 49-year-old man with back pain and headache. Note the L3 vertebra is apparently enlarged on the lateral and PA in comparison to the other vertebra, and also it is slightly more opaque. So the differential for an ivory vertebra includes pagets and cancer. In this case, it's more likely to be pagets because of the increased size. So pagets is most likely. The next steps would include bone scan and radiographs. That would confirm the diagnosis of pagets. If further testing does not confirm pagets, you can rule out metastasis with other tests. Headache may be due to increased size of the bones of the skull pinching cranial nerves. That happens in pageants. Here's a 52-year-old man after a car collision. He has bilateral arm weakness and hypoesthesia. However, vibration sense is preserved. Run your lines and you will note an anterior fragment of the vertebral body here. And with the history, this suggests a teardrop fracture with anterior cord syndrome. The reason why you know it's anterior cord syndrome is because vibration sense is carried on the dorsal columns. The best next step is to stabilize the patient and refer them to the emergency department. Here's a 64-year-old woman who has neck, wrist, and metacarpophalangeal pain and swelling. The radiograph demonstrates an increase in the atlantodental interval. This means that it's most likely rheumatoid arthritis. This finding is very important because it indicates severe instability. So the management includes referral to the emergency department as a conservative measure. You want to stabilize that patient. Here's an 88-year-old man with dysphagia to solids and weight loss. On the film, there is a flowing ossification across at least four vertebral bodies on the anterior aspect. This is consistent with diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, or DISH. And this mass here is protruding out into the esophagus possibly accounting for his dysphagia. That makes a lot of sense. The most likely diagnosis is DISH. The best next steps. You could confirm that this osteophytic complex is causing the dysphagia with a barium swallow, but when it comes to management, you can just modify this patient's diet because he's only having trouble with solids. Here's a 13-year-old girl with back pain that is worse at night, and it's relieved by aspirin. Notice that there is a curvature here. And on the convex side of the curvature, we note an increased opacity, uh, an irregular density here, adjacent to the transverse process of L2. So with the history here of night pain, uh, scoliosis, painful scoliosis in a child. This is classic for an osteoid osteoma. The best next step is to further evaluate it with SPECT and CT. Here are 
Here's a 72-year-old man with low back pain, syncope. He has a history of hypertension. Note a curvilinear calcification in the abdomen. This is consistent with an aortic aneurysm, especially with his history, but pay attention to the syncope. The most likely diagnosis is an aortic aneurysm. The best next step is referral to the emergency room because this finding of syncope, if there was no problems and all you had was an incidental finding of calcification, it would not necessarily be an emergency. In this case, it is. Here's a 55-year-old man with neck, hip pain, and fatigue. Notice these multiple lucencies in the skull which are of similar size. This is most likely multiple myeloma. The best next steps involves an extensive workup and management, including a referral to an oncologist. Here's a 56-year-old man with right middle finger ulcer and finger pain. On the film, you can notice acroosteolysis of the distal phalanges breaking down this here. Also, calcinosis cutis, calcification in the skin. This combination of findings is suggestive of scleroderma. That's the most likely diagnosis. The best next step could involve ruling out hyperparathyroidism or metastatic calcinosis. So in order to do that, you can measure the calcium and phosphate. And if those measurements are normal, it's most likely to be scleroderma. You should refer the patient to a rheumatologist. Here is a 30-year-old woman with a one-week history of bilateral hand pain. On physical exam, you note a central neck mass. On the film, notice the radial sided resorption of the phalanges. And again, we have acroosteolysis. This time, this is suggestive of hyperparathyroidism. And the central neck mass pushes it towards a primary hyperparathyroidism. The best next step is to confirm the diagnosis with serum calcium and PTH, parathyroid hormone, refer the patient to the endocrinologist. Here's a 30-year-old woman with a painful swollen wrist and decreased range of motion. Notice this expansile soap bubbly lesion of the distal radius and it extends to the subarticular margin. This combination of findings suggests the most likely diagnosis is a giant cell tumor. You should refer this patient to an orthopedist. Here's a 74-year-old woman with a painful erythematous swollen wrist. The major finding on this film is in the triangular fibrocartilage complex. You can notice chondrocalcinosis. That is suggestive of calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease or pseudogout. The best next step is referral to a rheumatologist who may perform synovial fluid analysis to confirm the diagnosis and rule out other bad things like septic arthritis and gout. Here's a 50-year-old woman with a four-year history of wrist pain. Notice the erosion of the ulnar styloid, a loss of joint space in, in between the carpal bones and crowding of the carpal bones. Also, uh, anterior tilt of the carpal bones. This is suggestive of rheumatoid arthritis. The best next step in, involves radiographs of the neck, labs to make sure that it's RA, and referral to a rheumatologist. Here's a 66-year-old woman with diabetes. She has a progressive deformation of her foot, also an ulceration of the foot. Notice this so-called rocker bottom deformity. 
a dislocation at the Lisfranc or tarsometatarsal joint. We also have density changes. So all the D words, debris, dislocation, destruction. So all the D words, this is a Charcot joint, also called a neuropathic or neurotrophic arthropathy. The best next step involves referral to an orthopedist who may attempt casting or bracing as a means to let this heal. A 30-year-old manual laborer presents with chronic shoulder pain during overhead activity. On physical exam, the greater tuberosity is tender. Notice this calcification here. This is most likely calcium hydroxyapatite deposition disease of the supraspinatus tendon, you can imagine coming down, or tendinosis is another name for it, or HAD, H-A-D-D. The best next step is just go straight to treatment. This doesn't require any further imaging. There's plenty of treatments out there. Here's a 30-year-old man with shoulder pain, a recent shoulder injury, and a history of repeated injury. On physical exam, there's a positive anterior apprehension test. The major finding is here, a cortical depression in the head of the humerus. This is also called a hatchet or hill sack deformity, representing recurrent anterior shoulder dislocation. The best next step is referral to an orthopedist, and MRI or ultrasound may be used to further evaluate the rotator cuff. Here's a 60-year-old man with right hip pain Compare the right hemipelvis to the left hemipelvis. You'll notice that the bone of the right pelvis is increased in size. It's expanded. And it's also greater opacity on the right side. This is called the brim sign or the, or the brim sign of the iliopectineal line in Paget's disease. It's most likely Paget's disease. And doesn't necessarily require any further imaging, although additional radiographs could identify further sites of involvement, as could a bone scan. A 40-year-old man presents with hip pain. He has a history of Cushing disease. Analyze the head of the femur. You will find a, an imaging sign called the crescent sign, the most likely diagnosis is avascular necrosis with the sign and also with the history and the pain. The best next step is MRI to confirm that it is AVN. Here is a 19-year-old man with knee pain that is worse at night. There is a sclerotic mass on the distal femur with what appears to be a lucent nidus. That makes the most likely diagnosis an osteoid osteoma that's also consistent with the history. The best next step is to evaluate it further with a CT, which would clearly show the nidus if it is indeed a typical osteoid osteoma. Here's a seven-year-old girl with a fever and a painful swollen knee. The major finding is a large round lucency of the proximal tibial metaphysis. With the history, this is most suggestive of a Brody's abscess, also called subacute osteomyelitis. The best next step is to refer the patient to the emergency department because she may require intravenous antibiotics. There also may be further imaging and testing done. Here's a 13-year-old boy he has knee pain while running. The major finding here is a pedunculated mass of the distal femur. It's also pointing away from the joint or towards the diaphysis. That makes the most likely diagnosis an osteochondroma. The best next step, you can get an MRI. Although these lesions do not necessarily require any type of treatment. Here's a 70-year-old woman with knee pain and stiffness that is worse with prolonged sitting 
on physical exam, you notice genu verum. Notice the decreased medial joint space relative to the lateral joint space, so it's asymmetrical. Here is a subchondral cyst. Here is subchondral sclerosis. The most likely diagnosis in this case is osteoarthritis. Next step, treatment, exercise. No further imaging is necessary. A 66-year-old man presents with chronic knee pain, which recently worsened, and it became swollen and an erythematous. Major finding is there and there, that is chondrocalcinosis of the medial and the lateral menisci. So the most likely diagnosis is calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, pseudogout. However, the best next step is referral to a rheumatologist who will most likely perform synovial fluid analysis to confirm that it is CPPD and also to rule out other causes of acute inflammation of a, a joint. Because the finding of chondrocalcinosis doesn't rule out septic arthritis, for example. Here is a 60-year-old woman complaining of left lower quadrant abdominal pain on physical exam. The hepatic dullness to percussion is absent. Notice the air under the diaphragm, the hemidiaphragms on both sides. This is in addition to the normal stomach air gas and the air in the colonic, the splenic flexure of the colon. So there's additional air in this space here and here. This indicates a rupture of a hollow viscous in the abdomen. In this patient's case, possibly a diverticulum. The next step is referral to the emergency department. Here's a 53-year-old woman who has shoulder pain that is unresponsive to conservative care. And this image explains why it's unresponsive, because the shoulder's fine. The finding is here in the apex of the lung. This is most likely a pancos tumor needs further evaluation and referral for management as a tumor, a malignancy. Here's a 60-year-old man. He has a persistent cough and dyspnea. He's afebrile on physical exam. The major finding is best seen on the lateral here. It is a large lung mass, retrocardiac mass. Here's the heart and is posterior to the heart. This is most likely a malignant mass based on the size of the mass. The borders are poorly defined. There is no calcification within it. And the best next step is to treat it as a malignancy. Get further imaging, refer. Here is a 64-year-old man. He has a two-day history of cramping abdominal pain and constipation. Look at the bowel gas patterns you see air fluid levels, that's what these lines represent, of the small bowel. You know it's the small bowel because it's within the center of the abdomen and not going on the outside. So this is most likely a small bowel obstruction. Next step is to refer the patient to the emergency department.